When covering the media, the natural starting point is to look at output, what news organizations are putting out there. Sometimes, though, it helps to look at what we're not seeing. Over the past few years, the Palestine-Israel conflict has quietly slipped out of the headlines. Part of that has to do with the novelty factor in the story of the Arab Spring, which has been widely covered, but there's more to it than that. A few months back, a significant story came out of Palestine, but it did not involve violence, stone throwing, or suicide bombings, which is why you may not even know that Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails went on a mass hunger strike. Now, hunger strikes are not unprecedented, and not all of them are considered newsworthy. But what set this one apart was the sheer scale of it. An estimated 2,000 prisoners going without food to protest conditions behind bars. Why don't more people know about this story? Why didn't the media give it the attention it deserved? And what lessons should Palestinians take when having been lectured by the international community to turn their back on violence in favor of non-violent forms of protest, they find that when they follow that advice and use the most non-violent form of protest possible, a hunger strike, the media just aren't interested. The Listening Post's Flo Phillips now on some of the harsh realities of the news business as they pertain to the current state of the Palestine-Israel story. For the past 21 months, millions of protesters throughout the Middle East have been rebelling against age-old repressive regimes. For some, the fight was relatively short. For others, it is far from over. Throughout, the media have hardly missed a beat. Secretary of Violence continues. Until now. Peaceful Palestinian resistance, the current course of action in the Israel-Palestine conflict, the region's longest running dispute, hasn't exactly been getting top billing in the news bulletins. I think one of the misconceptions of covering the Arab Spring has been that the Palestine story is no longer relevant to the Arab street, and I think this is a big mistake because I don't think it's true. The Palestinians have been peacefully resisting occupation for decades, and yet their plight didn't receive the same kind of coverage that uh, other Arab revolts did. With what is happening in the Arab revolutions, global media is distracted, but when all other issues are resolved, the Palestinian crisis will remain. April 17th is Palestinian Prisoners' Day, and it was marked by the start of the mass hunger strike by Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli jails, some detained without charge. As many as 2,000 prisoners saying they went without food for 28 days. To conceive of a hunger strike that lasts that long and not to report it as major news it does seem strange to me. One would have thought uh, both TV and, and the print media would seize the occasion to talk about a new phase in the conflict. But this just hasn't happened. Palestinians, they've had another struggle, which is the war of, uh, war of words or war of media, uh, which they do not get covered. People would say it's complicated, but I, it's, it's not complicated. It's, for me, it's, it's very simple. The silence from the mainstream media was deafening. Well, I'm not sure that the international media has it out for the Palestinians. There is no conference call every morning where everybody in the international media gets on the line and says, let's not cover the Palestinian story today. That's different than saying that the international media may not give the kind of coverage to the Palestinian issue that Palestinians want or deserve. And I'm quite sure that it is an undercovered issue. Palestinians have been lectured on the merits of nonviolent protest for years. Palestinians must abandon violence. Resistance through violence and killing is wrong and it does not succeed. And not just by politicians. Some Western journalists echoed the call. Nonviolent resistance offers a reed of hope for a future here of less violence and more change. But when it's quiet, Reporters aren't nearly as interested in covering the story. The deal has now been signed. One it took a long time of going without food for the prisoners' Israel peaceful protest to, to make headlines. The coverage of the prisoner story was a print story. There were editorial pieces in uh, European media, some coverage in American press. The print coverage was strong. It was talking about a new phenomenon. It was talking about Palestinians going hungry for freedom. That's a very strong message, if you will. But, but we didn't see that follow through I into TV. I think the reason this story has gotten as little coverage as it has is it is not perceived as a, an earth-changing, earth-shaking event. 
is seen as a another protest in a region that's filled with protests. It is not on the par of hundreds of thousands of people filling Tahrir Square. It is not endangering a regime. So it has a special threshold that it has to meet. Could that threshold be the visual test? Is a protest behind bars, beyond the reach of the news cameras, simply a case of out of sight, out of mind for news organizations? And then there's the larger question. Are the non-violent forms of protest that Palestinians have been urged to use just not visual enough for the picture-hungry media? Remember, when it comes to covering conflict, the Gaza war in 2008, suicide bombers, border confrontations, pictures are everywhere. Not now. There is a lack of patience in dealing with the Palestinian issue. The international media just wants to see blood, rockets and destruction. If that destruction increases, that's when they give us attention. Tactics that don't have the uh, visual drama uh, of violence are far less likely to be uh, treated as important media events. This woman on your screen wanted to kill Israelis by setting off a bomb strapped to her own body. It also reflects a broader failure to interpret a series of developments on the Palestinian side, including their peaceful protests against the separation wall. One would have thought that a shift of this magnitude from armed resistance to nonviolent forms of opposition would attract a great deal of uh, attention. At times, the lack of coverage appears political. Compare the huge international coverage last yeah. October that came with the release of a single Israeli soldier. A lone, frail figure emerged blinking into the glare of publicity after Gilad Shalit. Years of as much as some advocates for the Palestinian side would argue there's a double standard in the coverage of these stories and it's rooted in politics. Some Palestinian media outlets were not above playing politics themselves when it came to covering the hunger strike. As Palestinians, we have shortcomings in spreading and explaining our issues and suffering to the world. There are Palestinian media whom I did not see at all. They didn't even invite me on their news channels. And this is hurtful, because those channels are not a genuine platform for the Palestinian people. The Arabic and Palestinian media space should be open to all. Welcome here did a really poor job of covering the hunger strikes. A group of people, they asked the store owners, they asked the normal people, passers-by in the street, if they knew the names of the hunger strikers. And the, most, the majority of the people, like let's say 90% of those who were interviewed, they, they had no clue, they had no idea. And this also goes back to the local media. Every TV station in Palestine is politically affiliated. The mass hunger strike is yet another phase, another development, in a 45-year-old story of occupation and resistance in Palestine. And just because other Arab countries are in various states of upheaval, just because fewer stones are being cast in Palestine, that doesn't mean that what's happening behind bars in Israeli prisons is not news. Everybody thinks when things are quiet, there is no story in Palestine. This is when there is a story in Palestine because something is changing. The dynamics are changing and it's a missed opportunity.